I am motivated by, uh, I'm motivated first and foremost by curiosity uh, and want to share what intrigues me. And I want to provide thereby as broad a, a, a knowledge and experience of artistic practice as I can possibly serve to illuminate. Uh, the, the primary viewers of art are artists. Uh, and probably the first line uh, I have to acknowledge as my audience are the are professionals, people who have a passion for art and thus make their living on that, uh, exercising that passion. Those are my uh, colleagues. But when I'm writing a, a, a catalog essay, for instance, um, I have to keep the interest of the engagement of the subject uh, in mind, not the, not the dealer, but the, so much as the artist, him or herself, um, it, invariably, the best thing anyone can say to me is, well, the best thing an artist can say to me is that I brought to attention aspects of the work that the artist, uh, her or himself, uh, was not aware of. There are certain publications I'd like to be writing for, uh, and had I time to reach out to them, I would. But I don't have time for them. Also, writing for publications is not my bread and butter. You don't make a living writing art criticism. You make a living being an art critic. In other words, uh, exercising, uh, d demonstrating, and then exercising authority. And, uh, and expertise. I'm, I'm not concerned with making big reputations out of uh, you know out of people whose uh, MFAs or BFAs are still still wet. Uh, and in fact, I do have a certain bias towards uh, mid-career artists whom I feel have been passed over. And I think it's the historian in me that, uh, that uh, leads me to that impulse. Um, but other critics, may, particularly younger ones, may feel mo more comfortable uh, bringing to the fore uh, younger artists. And uh, I think if uh, all critics tended one way or the other, uh, the discourse would uh, would bog down in in, uh, in a kind of a one-sided uh, frenzy. If if uh, we pay too much attention to young artists at the expense of older ones. Then uh, you know it, we're we're falling prey to the to trends and also to the uh, the, the market uh, preference for buying low, young, and selling high, old. By the same token, if we overemphasize uh, the or, or look entirely at older artists, then um, not only does that discourage younger artists, but uh, it forces the weight of history on our uh, on our perspective. We need to have access to the weight of weight of history, but not be oppressed by it. I, I don't uh, completely regret uh, it's the, the diminution of uh, of the power of art critics. Uh, that our, you know, that, that when given that power, not only art critics, but any sort of uh, determiners of the, uh, of, of the discourse can be polarizing and can create what are effectively artificial uh, circumstances, artificial, uh, artificial boundaries to the discourse. There's a greater acceptance of visual of, of contemporary visual art activity in the media than there used to be, but there's a greater regard for it as, enter, as a form of entertainment and less as a form of uh, social discourse, an aesthetic discourse, especially than there used to be. Being given the greatest attention in the mass media is is uh, is more shallow than the art being ignored necessarily. But in a funny way, the internet uh, pr provides us uh, both uh, both aggravates this situation 
and provides relief from it because uh, the, the uh, media, the communications available on the internet are more broadly oriented towards the absorption capacities of the uh, of those accessing them. Internet media are more flexible. I don't know how much we take advantage of that flexibility, but we certainly do uh, to an extent that outstrips that provided by print media and broadcast media. Now that I understand what you mean by feeble art, I've seen a lot of feeble art that is strong precisely because it is feeble. I've seen a lot of feeble art that thinks it's strong because it's feeble, but it's really feeble. Uh, and I think it dep depends on the particular artist's ability to capitalize on the nature of uh, the material, the nature of the expression, the nature of the aesthetic. Uh, the nature of the message. Uh, I don't think the intellectual life needs to, needs to remove one from uh, an engagement with uh, popular entertainment, with uh, you know, uh, with uh, the you know, with with either what's popular or what's with entertainment. But an, an access to an intellectual level of discourse as well. Not instead, but as well, uh, seems to be crucial to maintaining the broad grasp one's ha one has, not simply of one's art and art making and viewing art, but of how one views life as well. You should approach art from every way possible and allow it to speak to you on every level possible. Maybe that's uh, Paul's problem with this feeble art, in that so often uh, it's well, usually it seems to be speaking on on uh, rather base levels, uh, and so often it actually is. But in fact, uh, the best of it is inviting us to uh, to, you know to, to come down to its level and 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 realize that there's a micro level of of intellect that uh, that's also pertaining. Create, uh, find exhibition circumstances for your work. Cre even create them, uh, whether they're uh, whether they display or publication or that kind of thing. Get, uh, you get the work out by, by by showing it, even if you have to invent the space.